Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video on the official MTG Arena channel. Today we're taking a look at a red-white equipment combo deck built around Colossus Hammer, a one-man equipment giving plus 10 plus 10 and the equipped creature loses flying, but it costs a whopping 8 mana to equip. So instead of paying 8 mana, we're going to try and equip it for free in this deck using our 8 one-mana enablers. We have a Resolute Strike, an instant saying target creature gets plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. If it's a warrior, we may attach an equipment we control to it for free, so that's why all the cheap creatures in this deck are warriors. And then four copies of Sigarda's Aid, a recent addition through Innistrad Remastered, an enchantment saying we may cast aura and equipment spells as though they had flash, and whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under our control, we may attach it to target creature we control. So now all of a sudden we can play our Colossus Hammer at instant speed and attach it to a creature right away, which is how we can set up a turn 2 kill in this deck thanks to the new Cacophony Scamp, a 1 mana 1-1 one, one warrior, important for Resolute Strike, and when it deals combat damage to a player we may sacrifice it if we do proliferate. Don't really care about proliferate, but being able to sacrifice it is actually a huge upside, because when the Scamp dies it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So if we have a Scamp on turn 1, on turn 2 we can either go Sigarda's Aid into Hammer, or Hammer into Resolute Strike, deal over 10 damage with a Scamp, and then sacrifice it, dealing another 10 damage to close out the game on the spot. And then our other cheap creatures include Fireblade Charger, which is quite similar to this camp. Another 1-1 one -one saying when it dies it deals damage equal to its power to any target, but instead of being able to sacrifice it to set up a turn to kill, it gains haste as long as it's equipped. So that can also be nice to be able to attack out of nowhere if we manage to equip it. And then our final 1 mana warrior is the Exuberant Fuseling, which is basically just a 1-1 one -one trampler, which allows us to attack past any chum blockers once we equip it with Colossus Hammer, which can also be quite important. But if the opponent does present some blockers, we can also potentially end the game with a thud by sacrificing a creature and then dealing damage equal to that creature's power to any target. So we can just aim this at the opponent's face, especially after sacrificing a Scamp or Charger equipped with Colossus Hammer. We get to deal twice the amount of damage with our thud now to make sure we can end the game on the spot. And then to make sure we can consistently find our hammer, we also have four copies of Fighter Class, which when it enters lets us search our library for any equipment card and put it into our hand. So we're usually going to find our Colossus Hammer, but we also have a one-off Shadow Spear, which can give plus one plus one, a Trample and a Lifelink, equips for just two mana, so this one we can actually pay for, and that will make sure that our creature that's equipped with Colossus Hammer can attack past any Chum Blockers, and the Lifelink also very helpful in racing situations. And then to round out the deck we have some initial draw and discard effects to make sure we find all the different combo pieces, because despite having essentially 8 hammers between hammer and fighter class, 8 ways to equip for free and 10 creatures, we still need to make sure we find all 3 of those elements in a timely fashion. So to help with that we have Thrilling Discovery, 2 mana sorcery, lets us gain 2 life, then we may discard 2 cards if we do draw 3 cards. And then a two copies of Bitter Union, which lets us discard one to draw two. And then for one mana we can also sacrifice it, and then creatures we control gain haste until end of turn, which can also be important alongside our Scamp or Fusling to be able to attack right away. And then topping off our curve, two copies of Nahiri, the Unforgiving, can be played for three mana and two life, in which case it enters with three loyalty, or four mana, in which case it enters with five loyalty. And then has two different plus one abilities, one to discard a card and then draw, which is what we're most interested in, to help find the missing pieces. And then we can also plus one, saying until our next turn, up to one target creature attacks a player, each combat if able, so that can prevent the opponent from attacking Nahiri with that creature, maybe also forcing them to attack into a large creature we control equipped with Colossus Hammer. And then the zero ability says exile target creature or equipment card with mana value less than Nahiri's loyalty from our graveyard, create a token that's a copy of it, the token gains haste and exile it at the beginning of the next end step. And because all the creatures and equipment in this deck have mana value of one, we will always be able to get them back with Nahiri using that zero ability. So that can also be very nice to maybe get back a Colossus Hammer if the opponent made us discard it for instance, or maybe get back another creature that will be able to sacrifice in the same turn to a thud for instance. And then the mana base includes plenty of red-white dual lands, because we need to be able to cast all our spells with maybe just one or two lands in play, which is of course the final element we need alongside our three combo pieces, is ideally two lands to cast all those spells. So we've got four copies of Sacred Foundry, four pathways, four copies of Inspiring Vantage, which is the best land in this deck as it's untapped early on and doesn't cost us any life, Battlefield Forge, Crucible to make some 1-1s, and Igancho offering a tiny bit of interaction, and then a few basics to round things out can also be useful in case we need to search them up. Could also try Mutavolt in the mana base as a creature land that counts as a warrior for Resolute Strike, but of course there's not too many spells we can cast using Colorless Mana. 
And then we also get to free roll a Gigantha as our companion. Even if we don't cast it for 5 mana, we can still put it in hand and then maybe discard to still get some value from it. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and our hand threatens a turn 2 kill, so I'm all for it. Scamp into Hammer with Resolute Strike and then Nahiri to potentially play a longer game if it comes to it. So if our opponent doesn't have a 1 mana play, they could just be dead. All right, turn one scamp. Let's go. What's our opponent playing? Turn one mountain. Uh oh, this could be bad. A denizen. All right, so we can get our scamp equipped here. See if they block. Opponent obliges. But now they're in permanent shumblock mode. Since as soon as the scamp connects, we can sacrifice it and take out the opponent. Firebrand's is a uh, turn late here, would have been very effective as their one drop. Deals one to the scamp. <laughs> and her opponent explodes. Alright, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is just missing a creature to equip Colossus Hammer, and we've got a Discovery to help find one, so definitely keep. Can uh, play Sigarda's 8 on 1, turn to Discovery, discarding lands and maybe Fighter class, and then we'll find a creature at some point, opponent red-black. So now I'm maybe in favor of just discarding both lands, since we might draw another, and... Uh, we may need the redundancy of fighter class if they make me discard hammer somehow. Okay. So next turn we can keep digging. Opponent may be forced to keep up instant speed removal for the rest of the game. And uh, yeah, we'll just go for discovery. Discarding maybe one land and one fighter class at this time. Nahiri could also come in handy. And a Bankbuster. Pwn might still have a Fatal Push in hand. Backup Hammer. So can start using Nahiri to dig for additional creatures. And then I could see discarding a hammer so we can also get it back with Nahiri and we may end up leveling up fighter class to use its various abilities if the game goes long. Sure. All right, picked up our charger so we're good to go next turn. So our opponent's playing it safe here. Keeping up mana for potential removal. Cruise Bankbuster to pressure Nahiri. Alright, with a land I think we actually can win through Fatal Push. Can just play Fireblade Charger, use Nahiri's zero ability to get back a hammer from the graveyard. If they respond with Fatal Push, flash in two more hammers equipping Fireblade Charger, and then when it dies it will deal 21 damage on the way out, which should be just enough here. Yeah, let's try it out. So we'll play Charger, and then use a zero ability here, Exile Colossus Hammer, and then we have two more hammers so we can play at instant speed. I imagine our opponent's going to Fatal Push in response here. Alright, they let it resolve, so now we can attack. There's a Fatal Push, play another Hammer response. And this would already be enough for lethal, but we can make it 30 damage if we want to. Awesome, on to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw, and we've got the combo all rolled up here. Fighter class gets hammer, we've got the aid, we've got the creature. So just hoping there's no interaction to disrupt us. Put maybe an angel's deck, and we actually drew the hammer. So against angels, charger would gain haste, so it could maybe play a Sigarda's aid. Portable hole could maybe still exile it. Yeah, charger, I think makes sense since it's the most replaceable, as opposed to Sigarda's aid if it gets portable hold. If our opponent's just gonna chum block for a while, we can still trample over or thud for the win. That's gonna be youthful Valkyrie. So yeah, play Sigarda's aid attack, opponent's gonna chump most likely. Question is if we want to wait to set up the kill next turn since I'll be able to thud as well, unless our opponent manages to gain life. I'm just worried about a potential Skyclave Apparition. Yeah, I'm not sure if we can really circumvent Skyclave Apparition all that well. Alright, opponent takes the damage, so now we can get in for 11, and then next turn thud for another 22. Do they have a Skyclave? In which case, they have to exile the Charger, otherwise we can still get there through Fighter class. But they may see the Hammer itself as a bigger threat. Opponent does have the Skyclave. Exiles the Hammer, so we still have Charger in play now. So yeah, Fighter class get another Hammer. And hope they don't have a second Skyclave, pretty much. Opponent chumps, so now at least we have a replacement creature. And then Shadow Spear could also come in handy. Righteous Valkyrie's fine. Okay. And now we've got a lot of ways to potentially end the game. Can a Shadow Spear Charger increase its power some more? And then Thud, or we could attack first. And there we have it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's just missing a creature to equip. We have two enablers and essentially two hammers. No draw and discard effects either, so... We're at the mercy of our top decks. If we find one of our 10 creatures or essentially eight to draw and discard effects to find a creature, we might still be okay. So that's a lot of outs. Yeah, I think we keep it. On the draw, we also get an extra draw step. And there's our scamp. So we are setting up for a turn two kill here against green white. Could be angels. Make that Abzan with Wayfinder. So Grease Fang deck. Well, the Wayfinder is most definitely going to chum block. And then we'll go with uh, Sigarda's aid here, as opposed to Resolute Strike. Opponent chumps. We've got the hammer. And then Fighter Class might get Shadow Spear to give us some trample. Opponent does have Command, which can get rid of the hammer potentially. Liliana of the Veil, sometimes played in Grease Fang decks, could also get rid of our scamp. For now, just an informant. Okay, so Fighter Class gets Shadow Spear. Should do the trick. Play Shadow Spear, trample over informant, sack scamp, and that's more than 20 damage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing a free way to equip our creatures. We've got essentially three hammers, two creatures, and no additional card draw on the play. So if we don't find Sigarda's aid or Resolute Strike within our next, let's say, two or three draw steps, this hand's gonna fall apart. It's definitely a close call, having two of our combo pieces, having two lands. Those are all good things. I think we tried. 
And then turn one scamp has the highest upside if we top deck our enabler. And then we may fight our class just to get it going next turn. Opponent red black, there's a resolute strike. So do we think our opponent is holding a fatal push? If not, we can just win. Well, let's see if there's a pause here. There didn't seem to be one. Alright, nice turn to kill. Doesn't happen every day, but uh, good lucky on this attempt. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing a free equip, but we have Fighter Class for Hammer, two Chargers, and then both Discovery and Nahiri to dig for one of our enablers. So I think it's worth a keep. Opponent on Mono Blue Spirits, and there's our enabler. Now, Mono Blue Spirits is going to have some counter spells, so it's not going to be a walk in the park to get the combo online. Could see turn one Spectral Sailor, and if they can enchant it with Cure's Obsession, we could be in some trouble. Faceless Haven indicates that they don't have a second island, most likely, so all spells in hand including most likely some counter spells. So Fighter Class is a card we really want to resolve now since it's kind of unique in its nature. Could go for a Thrilling Discovery and opponent will have to counter before we need to discard anything. So it's not quite a blowout like it used to be. And if it does resolve, it can help me hit my land drops, make it easier to double spell, play around counter spells. And then now probably discard an extra charger, don't think I'll need two of them, and one resolute strike can go. Or we can discard Nahiri, which may be tricky to resolve and also gets pressured by the flyers. Yeah, maybe that's better. And then, yeah, if we get a hammer in play, we've got double resolute strike to force it through. Although resolving the hammer is going to be the challenge. Okay, picking up another one helps. Not gonna attack since I don't want to run into Rattle Chains. They could give Sailor Hexproof, so we just trade for Rattle Chains instead of both creatures. Now our opponent goes for Cure Obsession, since they want to find additional blue mana. And if they don't, they could be in trouble here. And yeah, another Faceless Haven, no double blue. So now the coast is clear for Colossus Hammer. And then let's make sure we do this right. Play Hammer, Resolute Strike, equip for free, hit for 13. Then I'll still have one mana available. Still need to watch out for Bound Spells potentially. But uh, yeah, that seems good enough for now. And then I might as well just play Tapped Sacred Foundry then. As opposed to playing another Resolute Strike just for plus two damage. If we had a thud in hand, we could have closed out the game right now. And now for opponent's force to chum block turn after turn. That buys us a lot of time. And with another resolute strike in hand, a bounce spell would not be the end of the world, since Charger gains haste if it becomes equipped. So if they're not careful, they could still leave themselves dead on the way back. But most bounce spells would probably be instant speed, so there's no reason for them to play it in their turn. It's going to be a Supreme Phantom to chill on defense and an attack for six. So we're also under quite a bit of pressure. Can channel Crucible to attack for a bit more. Scamp is interesting because now we'll have potentially two creatures that can attack to wield the hammer through Resolute Strike. So I think the plan is to just attack with the Charger, see what they do, whether it's jumping or bouncing. And then we can replay all the creatures and take it from there. Not gonna channel Crucible. Okay, put on chumps. That slows down their clock as well. And then now can play Scamp, play Fighter Class, keep up Resolute Strike. And which do we want to make sure resolves first? If the fighter class gets countered, 
that's not too bad. So we'll play Scam first, as we can potentially pay for the conditional Geist Light Snare. Then play Fighter Class. That also resolves. And then... Could also get Shadow Spear, which can give the Charger Trample. Which would have been also a valid line to just go for right away, but would have been kind of scary in the face of potential interaction. So I can play Shadow Spear now, or play the next turn. The mana efficiency probably doesn't really matter. And this plays around a conditional counterspell better. So I think we'll just pass. The other option was just getting another hammer. So we have two huge creatures attacking next turn. But they might still have enough chum blockers back, so... Giving Trample to the one charger is probably good enough. Opponent does now have six power in the air, so another Phantom could be scary. There's also Faceless Haven to worry about. Another Curious Obsession. So we'll see how many blockers they decide to keep back. Take five. Opponent sees two more cards. If we find a Thud, we can just win, even if they counter Thud, since we would still deal 11 with the Charger. So that's one of our best draws. Just a Mountain. Yeah, can play Shadow Spear, see if they counter it. And take it from there. That resolves. So next step, equip Fireblade Charger, just paying the 2 here. And hope there's no Bounce Spell. Could also attack with a Scamp. Is there a reason to... Let's say our opponent does have a Bounce Spell for Charger and doesn't block Scamp, then I can still Resolute Strike if they uh, aren't careful here. All right, opponent did sadly have the Brazen Borrower. So now we're going to lack Trample on the Scamp if they block it. And our opponent's going to play it safe. Nope. Alright, let's go for Resolute Strike. I think it's my only out at this point. But they may have another counter spell here. Yeah, Guys Light Snare. Alright, so, yeah. Possible they top deck Brazen Borrower, and we could have gone for Lethal last turn by giving Trample. Possible they had all bases covered anyway. Uh, can kill Rattle Chains, I suppose, and then still play Charger to jump Haven, so I'm not technically dead. Although, it's gonna be pretty tricky to top deck our way out of this. Another Curious Obsession. Alright, that's six in the air. GG's. It's a very close game. And again, possible we had the winning line if we went for Shadow Spear return sooner. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a great hand. Creature, two enablers, and then fighter class to get hammer. And then I'm probably going to want to play Fusling on one, class on two, and then turn three. We can hopefully go for aid into hammer, or we can just stop deck hammer against a black green could be a grease fang deck in which case yeah just play fusling still our plan and then next turn aid into hammer okay it's a sultai deck instead maybe a self mill kind of dredgeless dredge deck if you will so having trample on the fusling is huge and there's a shadow spear for good measure The opponent's deck's not really known for having a ton of interaction. Could have waited for them to chum block. But uh, we'll make it easy for them. Opponent takes 11. And if they cannot remove the Fusling, we'll have 22 damage at least incoming. I guess Resolute Strike makes it even more. 
And yeah, there's not much that Sultai self milk can do about it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, we've got Hammer, we've got Charger, missing a free equip, but Reunion can help dig for Sigarda's Aid or Resolute Strike, so I think it's a keep. Put in Blue Rats, and there's Sigarda's Aid. So, if we want to play around a counter spell, I could play Aid on one, since we can give Charger Haste if we equip it with Hammer next turn. Upside of Charger first is that... We kind of have the threat of an instant speed hammer. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that's necessarily going to play out that way. So I'll play Sigarda's Aid now. Okay. So play Charger. And then I may just keep up hammer instead of going for it in the face of red mana. But yeah, we could be attacking for 11 here. It's just a bit risky if they kill Charger in response. Alright, opponent had the impulse. So now we can equip it. And hope they don't have a bounce spell. Since damage is not going to do it. And now Charger is not a scamp, so I cannot sacrifice it after dealing 11 damage. But uh, we're still going to force the opponent to jump pretty soon. Fuseling the draw. So I can Fighter Class, get Shadow Spear now to trample the Charger. Can play that instant speed thanks to Sigarda's aid. If they didn't block, then maybe I would have just played Fuseling instead. Okay, so opponents at 10. And they're presumably playing a Blue Rats Creativity combo deck which can potentially kill out of nowhere here with a treasure turning into a Locust God and a Sage of the Falls or maybe some other powerful two-card combo. But no, opponent cannot find a way out and explodes. Okay, we're on the draw and our hands got all the pieces we need. Just need to find a second land, I guess, to be able to cast Fighter Class so we can get our hammer. But uh, I'll try it. And then besides lands, drawing hammer would also be useful. So we have a lot of outs. Opponent on red aggro with turn one Kumano. And we found our land. So I could play turn one Fuseling. That way we can be attacking with our Fuseling on turn three. Or we can try and protect it a little bit better since it's our only creature. Go turn one aid, turn two fighter class, and then turn three. Fuseling, equip with hammer. Which I think I prefer. So we'll play Sigarda's Aid. And then hope the opponent is tapped out on turn 3. So we don't need to play around instant speed removal on Fuseling. Although with the Aid it's not too difficult and even have a Resolute Strike for an additional plus 2 plus 2. Okay, Soul Scar Mage could be problematic, shrinking our creatures down. And another one. Okay, so we'll get our Hammer here. And then next turn, trying to equip our Fuseling. Can also get a Shadow Spear at some point for life gain. So let's hope they tap out. Tempting to cast a Burn spell to use Prowess. It's going to be an Ember Cleave instead. Okay, Poon is also an equipment deck, I guess. So we're at 7. And yeah, time for Fusling. And then we just want to equip it now. And hope we can discourage an attack from the opponent. And then next turn, ideally find a land so we can fight our class, play Shadow Spear, equip it. Could still be dead to a bunch of burn spells here. Play with fire goes upstairs. So another non-creature spell will do it. And yeah, another play with fire. That's game. So yeah, just an aggressive enough start from the mono red deck. Managing to kill us through our combo. Maybe being on the play would have changed things, but who knows. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. 
Our hand is missing a hammer, but we have a few discard and draw effects, two creatures for redundancy, and a Sigarda's aid. So it's worth a shot. Up against green devotion, potentially. So don't expect too much interaction. And then turn one can play a scamp. Turn two, most likely bitter union. Take it from there. Probably a matchup where we're going to need some trample to get past any blockers. Okay, no Colossus Hammer for the turn 2 kill, sadly. Another scamp. So now, maybe discard scamp to Bitter Union and keep digging. Okay, there's our Hammer and our Thud, so that can also close things out. And we can do so next turn already. Could also attack, sacrifice, scamp, kill elves. Don't know if that's really necessary. So yeah, we'll just uh, attack for one and pass. And then we've got our third land. So we're just going to go Sigardus 8 into hammer, thud. And that's more than 20 damage. And there we go. Could also attack first if we wanted to. Alright, so we got to see our hammer combo deck in action. And it's incredibly impressive whenever we can set up those turn 2 kills, even if they're not that common. But uh, especially in best of 1, where you have the surprise factor, you can potentially catch the opponent off guard. In best of 3, things will get a lot trickier, since the opponent is more likely to mulligan towards a hand that has cheap interaction. And then it's going to be a lot more difficult to actually get the damage in. So I would not recommend this for a best of 3 strat right now. But in best of 1, it seems like a decent deck, especially for your dailies, as the game is tend to be over very quickly. Can also maybe try a slower approach with Kemba to equip your hammer for free. Sadly, do not have access to open the armory, which was not included in Innistrad Remastered, as more redundancy to find your hammer, but there's certainly a lot of ways to build this deck. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.